Today in the news, we got Intel getting worse and AMD's pricing. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel, and this one, this one's pretty big. Now, I know we like to poke fun at their 14 nanometer process, but at least we had an idea as to when it would end. After the 10th generation Comet Lake S, we should have the 11th gen Rocket Lake S still at 14 nanometers, and following that should be the 10 nanometer process known as Alder Lake. Now, while we know Rocket Lake S will be a pretty big architecture change from uh, traditional Sky Lake, uh, Alder Lake is apparently going to be an even bigger one for desktop chips thanks to the recent leaks of it featuring the big dot little architecture with up to 16 cores and Intel will use the 10 nanometer process for that architecture so how about the performance of 10 nanometers well George Davis CFO of Intel says that we shouldn't expect much that the 10 nanometer process will not be as strong a node as people would expect from 14 nanometers or what they'll see in 7 nanometers so 10 nanometers is apparently another stopgap towards the holy grail 7 nanometers which brings me to the news it's broken yep Intel's 7 nanometer process is getting delayed. This information comes from a press release that the company made available today, basically their earnings call. The reason for this delay is because their yields are trending approximately 12 months behind the company's internal targets. That's not to say that it will take a year longer for the process to appear in Intel's product stack. According to Bob Swan, Intel CEO, the company has a backup plan. Basically, Intel plans on using third-party foundries for production. They will still delay the release of 7 nanometer products though but only by about six months keep in mind that i said products this will impact the upcoming gpu business as well at least intel is accelerating the timeline for their upcoming 10 nanometer products according to this slide their 10 nanometer alder lake cpus are coming sooner than we thought the consumer desktop version so alder lake s will be available in the second half of 2021 rather than 2022 like we thought now now, as we know, the process node is in everything, but given how much trouble Intel is having with these smaller chips, I doubt they'll have as much time to optimize them. Also in Intel news, a little quickie here, it looks like Rocket Lake S, the 11th generation that uses the backported design from Tiger Lake, will actually boost up to 5 GHz. It might seem like a no-brainer given it's still a 14 nanometer product and most of Intel's lineup already hits that number, but previous leaks pointed to a sub 5 GHz boost clock for those chips. Let's hope AMD can match that in the next architecture. Speaking of AMD, we have the internal prices of the Ryzen 4000 APUs that were just released. Now, these are the prices for OEMs, but it's interesting to see how much they are since AMD is still planning to release APUs as standalone products in the future. The 8 core 4750G is 309 US dollars, the 6 core 4650 is $209, and lastly, the quad core 8 thread 4350G is 149. As is, those prices are reasonable for what they offer. Let's just hope that when they do release these standalone APUs, we get a little more from the graphics department. Also relevant for those chips is the fact that all of the AM4 APUs will not feature PCIe Gen 4. It's not a huge deal since these are sold as complete systems, but if you buy one and in the future decide to buy a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, you'll have a nasty surprise. And that is pretty much it for the catch-up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.